Senator Moody. Honorable Senators, I rise today to honor a remarkable Canadian, former Senator Langdon Pearson, who celebrated her 90th birthday recently. Former Senator Langdon Pearson dedicated over 65 years to working for the betterment of children's lives, both in Canada and internationally. Her distinguished career has also included being a published writer, public speaker, volunteer, school trustee, foreign service spouse, and mother. Today, her voice remains strong and clear and as commanding as ever as she continues her life's work. Former Senate, Senator Pearson's contribution to the lives of children has been immeasurable. She has been a leader and an advocate for the development of children's rights, even before they were officially recognized by the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child. Hers is the power of a life dedicated to children. She has provided and proved the value of dedicating your life to the most vulnerable. And in doing so, has demonstrated that through one's passion and dedication, a whole society can be enriched. Former, former Pearson has helped to change the discourse on children's rights here in Canada. She has helped to bring children's voices to the table. She took an approach that had children and adults working together to find solutions, a paradigm shift from the approach that adults previously used to work to identify the challenges faced by children without the input of children. Born in Toronto in November 16, 1930, Langdon Pearson grew up in a small town in southwestern Ontario in a loving family setting. She was always encouraged to chart her own course. She attributes, uh, she attributes her sense of fairness to her upbringing. She once said, many people come to human rights advocacy from an expression of oppression. I come from the other direction. This sensitivity to injustice has informed both her career and her personal life. As a mother, she tried to instill in her children the same fundamental sense of fairness that she grew up with. She graduated from the University of Toronto in 1951 with a BA in ph philosophy and English. She met Jeffrey Pearson, one of the five sons of Lester B. Pearson, while attending university and married him immediately on graduating. She accompanied her husband to Oxford, where he completed his master's degree. With her husband now a diplomat, her once sheltered life rapidly expanded as she traveled with their growing family to France, Mexico, India, and to the former Soviet Union. With each new relocation, her eyes and her heart were open to the challenges and the diversity of the larger world. She often cites this experience, watching her children adapt to their new surroundings, helping them learn from what they were meeting as they settled in, as being instrumental in informing her own understanding of children's needs. She cites the importance of children having strong family support and the tools that they need as key enablers for how much they are able to accomplish themselves. In the 1980s, Senator Pearson was a leader in Canada's work for the International Year of the Child and edited the commission's, Commissioner's Report. In this role, she traveled throughout Canada to gather opinions directly from children and to understand their problems firsthand. It was then, as she stated in her maiden speech in the Senate, that she became aware of how, how much children are affected, sometimes inadvertently, by legislation and by government action. In, in 1984, to 1990, she was president, then chairperson, of the Canadian Council on Children and Youth. She was involved in numerous community-based organizations and was instrumental in conceptualizing and implementing the program, Children Living, Learning to Live. She was a founding member and chairperson for the Canadian Co Coalition for the Rights of Children from 1989 to 94 when she was summoned to the Senate. 
former Senator Pearson, has been referred to as a senator for children or the, the children's senator by Prime Minister Chrétien when he appointed her in order to speak on behalf of millions of Canadians who were less than 18 years old, disenfranchised due to their lack of right of vote. As a senator, she did not speak for children, but rather enabled them to speak for themselves by including them in meetings and even bringing them to the UN headquarters in 1991 for Canada's ratification of the Convention of the Rights of the Child. She was a strong advocate for making sure that all government policies affecting children be considered from the perspective of their impact on children's lives. She believed in constantly honing your perspective and having an individual approach, opposed to one-size-fits-all policies. She focused on the issues of child labor, youth criminal justice, child protection, children's health, and women's prenatal health. In 1996, due to her reputation as a child advocate, she was appointed to be in the, uh, the advisor on children's rights to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and to three succeeding ministers. This enabled her to promote Canada's reputation as a supporter for children's rights. She regularly advised the minister on children's issues in foreign policy and domestic policy. She was appointed in 1999 as the personal representative of Prime Minister Jean Chrétien to the 2002 Special Session on Children of the United Nations General Assembly. Senator Pearson retired from the Senate November 16, 2005, upon reaching the mandatory age. Her final act in the Senate was a study on Canada's implementation of the Convention of the Rights of a Child, concluding that Canada had been too slow to implement the measures needed to ensure the best outcome for our children. She has founded the Langdon Pearson Resource Center for the Study of Childhood and Children's Rights at Carleton University since then, donating all her collected resources to the development of children's rights. She retired from the directorship in 2010, but continues to work alongside it. Colleagues, what are the lessons that we can learn from such a woman, from a life well spent? Well, I think there are many. We can learn from her that the best response to being gifted with a happy and healthy life is to dedicate it to those less fortunate. We can learn from her that the best use of a voice is to lend it to those who do not have one. We can see in her work meaningful and real progress, but we can also see the work she has left for us to do and the work to make our democracy a more child-friendly democracy, and that it's not yet complete. We must consider the impact of legislation on children and youth. Children and youth do not have a strong voice within our democracy. And, colleagues, the rights of children and youth are still up for debate. Senator Langdon Pearson had a vision of Canada, one where our children would have every opportunity to grow and thrive, regardless of their postal code, their gender, their race, or other factors. This is a vision shared by countless Canadians who believe children should be a priority for our institutions. It is why so many have joined with Senator McFedrin to say that more Canadians should have the right to vote. I join with those voices, with many of the voices in this chamber, and with Langdon Pearson to say that children must be a priority and that that, that is the greatest part of her legacy. She showed us that considering children is in every aspect of our work and making sure that they are a priority is the right thing to do. History will surely smile on her for teaching us this lesson. Please join me in thanking Senator Pearson for her dedicated work and legacy and to wish her a happy 90th birthday. Thank you.